Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, we are making some crab stuffed lobster tails. It is Valentine's Day weekend. Well, Valentine's weekend is approaching. And in the 15 years I've been with my husband, Valentine's Day out to dinner is just not our thing, okay? It's too busy. Getting reservations is like a game, okay? And everything is so expensive, and I always feel like it's underwhelming because the staff is really busy. It's just make things at home. I've talked about this for the entire 12 years I've been here on YouTube. So we're making stuffed lobster tails. It is a splurge, definitely a splurge. However, you can make, for what I paid for the lobster tails and the crab, I can make about eight of them versus what I would pay for two So at a restaurant. So while yes, it's pricey, you don't have to make them all. In fact, today I'm only making three lobster tails. I have the other three in the fridge that I will make in a day. Um, for something else. And then the crab, you can make, you can use a leftover crab to make crab cakes. So you do you or you make all eight. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and start by chopping up a couple of shallots. And what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna work simultaneously in a second because I'm going to finely chop some shallots and garlic. I'm gonna get that to saute with just a tiny bit of olive oil until they become nice and tender and translucent in a small saucepan, we're gonna make some clarified butter that we are going to then flavor with lemon and garlic and dip the whole shebang in, and it is so good. I had full intentions on sharing this recipe with you around the Christmas season, but it just, we couldn't fit it in with everything else that we had going on. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and save it for Valentine's Day. It is a special, like I said, it's a special treat for sure. I can't get this thing off to save my own life. A special treat for sure, but so worth making once in a while. And I cannot wait to eat dinner. So we've got a couple of shallots. I'm gonna go ahead and just mince them really fine. I don't want any big chunks here. Okay, add those to a skillet with a little olive oil. It's gonna start sizzling in just a minute. I'm not looking for things to get super brown and crispy around the edges or anything like that. What I'm looking for is for them to become soft and translucent. So just give them some time. Don't crank the heat up too much. Having said that, I gotta turn mine down a bit. Let's talk clarified butter. Very easy to make, very, very easy to make. I like salted butter for this. I'm usually one that always cooks with unsalted butter because I'm a control freak. I like to control the amount of salt that goes into my food. However, I think with clarified butter, using salted butter is just the way to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, I'm gonna add a couple sticks to this skillet uh, saucepan here. And all I'm going to do is very gently cook the butter until it's pretty much all melted. And you'll start to see all of the foaminess and all of the milk solids and everything. And the longer you cook it, you don't wanna crank up the heat so much that it browns the butter, but what happens is all of those solids and all of those foamy bits will disappear. They'll, some, of, some of them will sink to the bottom, they'll cook out, and then you're left with perfectly clear clarified butter, which I'll show you. I got a piece of shallot in there from ice spoon, which I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. But right now, all you need to do is put that on like medium low heat, let it do its thing. I've got the oven also getting ready at 400, I'm gonna say 340. At 400 degrees, I want the oven to be nice and hot. My lobster tails will be coming out to play very, very soon. But while that happens, let's talk crab. I think the only suitable crab to use for a stuffing, really for many things, if not all things, in my, in my humble opinion, is a jumbo lump crab, okay? I like it, I like the texture, I like the flavor, I like every single thing about it, except for the price. But hey, don't blame me for that. Um, it's beautiful. I like to go through and just sort of pick at it and break apart the little cluster just to make sure there's no shell in there. And as you can see, um, it's really pretty gorgeous, right? Um, I, the only downside to this would be that I don't know where you're from, but where I'm from around these parts of the good old South Jersey, I can't just go ahead and buy six ounces of jumbo lump crab meat. It comes in a container, it comes in a tin, and it's pre-packaged, usually it's a pound, so when you are using crab, just think how I'm gonna be able to use the whole thing, right? I'm gonna use this for tonight, and then I'm gonna use the rest of it to make crab cakes. Um, so that's, you know, just keep that in mind. I never want you to waste a buck. 
So these are looking good. While that happens, they're looking really fantastic. They just have a few minutes left. I'm gonna chop up some parsley. I love to add my herbs to the hot skillet because when they just hit that little bit of heat, it just wakes them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a really fine chop. Fine, very, very fine. Just add the parsley in and I just turn it off. I just want that gentle heat to kind of wake it up. It just blooms the flavors. I like a lot of parsley in my crab mixture. Okay, so look at the butter for a second. I don't have another wooden spoon next to me. My natural me say. Okay, so you see what's gonna happen is under here, there's good stuff happening. Pretty soon, all this white foamy goodness up here will sort of cook out. A lot of it will cook out and then some of it will sink to the bottom. Just trust the process. Let this go about medium low heat. Don't turn it up high to burn it or to turn it into brown butter. That's not what we're looking for right now. We are looking for gentleness. Let's move on to the glory that is the crab stuffing that you're gonna put on top of your lobster. Think of this as like a crab cake without breading. So it's like the goodness of a crab cake without any fuss, right? You need your jumbo lump crab. We're gonna add an egg yolk to this. I don't need the egg white, I just need one egg yolk. Yes. You need a little bit of mayonnaise. There you go. Not much, because you're not making a ton here, you're just making enough for four lobster tails. Some lemon zest, not too much. And you're gonna, not coming out. Did I not take the, Laura Vitale. Nangela Miseria. I gotta back up, don't you worry about that. Don't you worry about me. I didn't take, that's a new one. I got it, I washed it, and then there's a piece of, clear plastic in the back I didn't get rid of. How dare I? We're gonna save the other half of this for the butter. But I also want a bit of squeeze of lemon. I mean, this is just gonna be fantastic. And Latza, that's a real word around here, Latza Old Bay. Because Old Bay is your seasoning, it is your salt. I like a good amount. Add your parsley, shallot, garlic mixture. And now you're just gonna go ahead and just mix it all around. All right, we've got some lobster tails here. These are about six ounces a piece. I've already fanned them out. They're good to go. I'm gonna show you how to do one. It is not my favorite thing to do. You could absolutely ask your fishmonger to do this for you. Say you shop at a Wegmans or a um, Whole Foods and the seafood counter, I can say, hey, can you just like clean them up for me, butterfly them out, and he'll do it for you. Been there, done that. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. Very simple. You just take your kitchen shears. You're gonna just go ahead and cut all the way down. If, and I also like to just go like that, in like that at the end, just sort of like a little T. If any of the shell breaks as you open it, because you kind of have to be forceful, uh, don't panic, it's not a big deal. You just kind of have to shovel, shovel, shove your finger under there, like so like that. Try not to break the shell simply because it's what's gonna help you kind of keep it up, keep the lobster meat on top but you're gonna have to do this carefully because you wanna loosen the meat from the shell as you open this up. It's really not my favorite thing, but it is worth doing. And then once you have some of it cleaned up from the side, I mean, you can see it's gonna come out much easier. Just give it one second. There we go. Beautiful, be patient. And then we're gonna clean up that little I clean all of that up. Okie dokie, artichoke. And it takes me a bit because I'm trying not to break up the shell, which isn't always easy, I can tell you that. Okay, 
But once you have it sort of maneuvered, like so like that, boom, lay it back down, be patient, fan it out, and there you go, right? I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands because I need to grab some salt to season the meat itself. Hard part's done. Not my favorite, but worth doing. I like to do a little salt on the meat itself. And then you take some of your stuffing and then you just quite literally pile it on top. That's it. Very easy, very simple, very scrumptious. And you've got your oven preheated. I'm gonna knock that one to the side so that I kind of you got your oven preheated to 400. These are gonna go in there for about half an hour or until the internal temperature of the lobster meat reaches 145 degrees. For me, it's pretty much always a half an hour at 400 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in there and then we'll talk a little bit about butter because it's pretty much done. So again, I'm gonna wash my hands. That I'm gonna save for something else. While the butter finishes up, I'm gonna go ahead and grate in here the zest of that remaining lemon. You can just do plain clarified butter, by the way. I like the garlic lemon um, with the salted butter. I think it's just dynamite, lots of flavor, absolutely delicious. So I do that, just grate it on a fine grater. I do two cloves and I'm gonna set it aside. My butter is just about where I want it to be. So I am going to just get that over there. I'm just gonna set it aside. Let's just check a little peek here. Looking good. It's almost there. Once it's just about there, I strain it. Look at the bottom. You don't wanna strain. Look in the pan. See that? That's what keeps it from being that gorgeous. Now look in here. Look in there. You see that gorgeousness? Now you know that's gonna be good. I use a coffee filter because I hate cheesecloth. <laughs> I like, when I, whenever I work with cheesecloth, I feel like, and this is just me, it always comes like wrapped like a fitted sheet. And I just like, it's just, it's not, it's not for me. I don't have the patience for cheesecloth, but coffee filters from a coffee queen is the way to go. It's almost there and that's just filtering out all of any any bits or solids or any of the foamy solids on top because we don't need it we don't need it just give it time because I don't, I don't want to see that there's so much goodness it just takes a little bit of time to like strain it all through and it is clear and it's perfect and it's not burnt and it's not brown and all the other pieces of stuff just gets left behind and I'm gonna marry the hot butter with the lemon and the garlic and it's gonna heat it up just enough to really extract all that great flavor and I am telling you it's phenomenal phenomenal almost there it is clear and gorgeous and perfect mmm it's making my mouth water just make sure you mash down any big pieces of garlic. If you're not a garlic fan, you can just do one clove. You can do no cloves, but that is absolute perfection. And now look at this. I just wanted you to see this again so you can see all of our hard work of letting it slowly cook paid off. We don't want any of that. Set that aside, wait for everything to come out, then we dig in and I'm so excited. I told you I was gonna put the rest of that crab to good use. Add an extra egg, add a little bit more mayo, some Dijon mustard, some breadcrumbs, more seasonings, and you got yourself the best crab cakes ever. Don't be giving me all the breadcrumbs on the top and then no filling, get out of town. We're not here for crab cakes, although I do have a killer crab cake recipe on my website already. A couple actually, but the most recent one is basically what I make all the time. So while that happens, 
the masterpiece. Okay, look at the masterpiece. Can we just take a look at this? Please don't burn me, please don't burn me, please don't burn me. Can we take a look at that? It's hot, it's really, really hot. Hi. Look at this baby, okay? Here's how easy this is, watch. Do this with a fork and a knife. Don't do this with just your hands. Boom, okay? Boom, okay, that's what Mia would say. Look how gorgeous. They're tall, they're beautiful. My mouth is salivating. You're not gonna like how I eat this because you know how I eat. It is not gonna be pretty. Ashpe, this is a new t-shirt. You'll not play me today, not today. You're not gonna like how I eat this because you know I just mess it all up. But that's just what I like. A little bit of the butter. Oh my heavens. If you were doing real fancy, you do a lemon, a little bit of parsley, a baked potato, and it's like you're at a fa fabulous restaurant, right? However, in this household, this is what I do. <laughs> Which I hate that I'm just such a messy eater, but just, I am who I am. I don't apologize. I would ordinarily dip, but I don't have my own little cup right now. Mmm! It makes me squeal. Look at that. Mmm. Awesome. The lobster is like sweet and luscious and tender. Like it's bringing me to tears. It's not good. The crab cake filling has so much flavor. The crab is gorgeous. If that's not heaven, then I don't know what is. It is the best stuffed lobster you will ever have, you will ever make. It is not complicated. Cutting the lobster out, I'm not gonna lie, lobster tail, not my favorite thing. Ask your fishmonger to do it for you, and then the hardest job is done. So, anyway, go get the recipe, laurenthekitchen.com. I really hope you make this this weekend. It is so worthy of being made. I mean, look at that perfectly cooked lobster. It's still steaming, it's asking to be eaten. Next up. Go make it, you'll thank me later. The recipe is on laurainthekitchen.com. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me. Love is I will see you in the next one.